Howdy, Furu speaking and welcome to a new Shadowers deck episode on my channel. Today we will look at the current combo Forestcraft deck. Forestcraft is a class that features elves combined with the power of quick aggressive swing turns due to the nature of the class's special mechanics that are getting activated or stronger when you have played a certain amount of cards in the same turn. The deck I am presenting you in this video is a bit more expensive than the last two Shadowers decks but still in a reasonable range. I will come back to that in a few seconds, but before, let's have a quick look on what we are playing in the Forestcraft combo deck. The main goal for the combo deck is to fill your hand with many cheap cards, which will allow you to play a bunch of cards in a single turn and then drop a huge Rhinoza so Roach. This is, this is this one. And that is able to hit the face for a lot of damage. The Rhino is a Storm card that is getting plus one attack for each card that was played earlier this turn, so it is very common to get that minion out with four or more attack. To be able to play many cards in a single turn, you're running a bunch of one drops like the Water Fairy or the Goblin, and also cards that are creating more fairies in your hand, like the Fairy Circle or the Evolved Princess Mage. As you can see, the Rhino is the only two play point card we have in the deck. So the Goblin Mage, which allows us to get a random 2-drop, is guaranteed to give us a Rhino in 100% of the cases. With the evolved Fortune Hunter Fina, we have another opportunity to get a Goblin Mage, so the chance to not have one when needed is really slim. The deck is more expensive than the first two Shadowers decks that I showed you, and that's because of the double legendary Ancient Elf. Normally you should even run 3 of those, but I only have 2. When you play the Ancient Elf, every other unit on your side of the battlefield is coming back into your hand, plus the Elf is getting plus one, plus one for every unit sent back this way. In the ideal case, you will have a strong ward unit on the board, but also a handful of great cards to replay again. If you don't have the wilds to craft the Ancient Elf, I would go for three Belper Kittens instead. Another opportunity to increase the wild cost even further would be the inclusion of Crystallia Tyre, this one is another legendary which is also fitting in this deck type, so up to 3 copies for that can be added. Your best matchup with this deck will be against Heavencraft and Dragoncraft. On the other end, you are facing a tough time against Shadowcraft. So far for the deck overview, now it's time for some games. First game, we have Forestcraft versus Dragoncraft. Uh, don't need the Dance of the Death here. For the start, that one is way too costly. Elf Child, my and the fairy circle. That one's good. And there's the first rhino. Which is a bit too early, but we are getting there. So we are starting. We will start here with the circle. Getting two fairies into the hand. And our opponent is not playing anything, which means that we are just going for the double fairy. Creating a bit of value on the board. We then dropping the unit next turn. We can go for the Elf Shard May. That is dealing one damage to a random enemy follower. And we can play the Justice. He is again. They're again not playing anything. And then we might just go. Or the face here. I think that is a bit early. But if his board is so weak, we can push damage now. So dropping him down to 16. With double Sylvan Justice, we can easily clear unit that he's dropping here. Unicorn Dancer Unica. That one is restoring two defense at the start of his turn. But we will kill them before. Gives us another fairy, and we got a second one. Another four points in his face, so he's already down to 12 here. Next turn, we might play the Elven Princess Mage here, that will push another two fairies into our hand. Or we can also play the Glimmer Wings to draw two cards if we play the other two fairies. We will see about that, but normally I would go for the Elven Princess Mage. And this one is now very cheap. Hmm. Yeah, then let's go for the 
Fortune Hunter Fina. We are evolving that. Getting the Goblin Mage. So if he's then clearing the board, we can play the Goblin Mage, get the Rhino. And can play a lot of cheap cards. We're also going for the Glimmer Wings here, drawing one card. Getting a Water Fairy. Let's sit him for four. He's already down to eight. And potentially the game is over next turn. That was one slow start here. Prison Dragon, that one is a ward that can't attack. We might evolve that. And it's a bit stronger. But even as an evolved creature, that's not good enough to survive here. Another Dragon Oracle. So he's now at 7 points. But we're at 5. But the game is then over. So we don't care for that. So we have the Ancient Elf. Which will allow us to get the cards back into the hand. Can we win then? If the Goblin Mates, we can play the Rhino. Yeah, that's good enough. Don't even need the Rhino because we can just evolve here and have the 8 damage. But anyway, well, the start was super slow. Easy victory. Dragon opponent using Runecraft, which is a bigger problem than the Dragoncraft. We will see about that. Uh, we are dropping the Nature's Guidance, could keep the Angelic Snipe. But I want to get the early units here out. So let's redraw. Ah, uh, that's not too great. Nature's Guidance, Rhino. Nothing to play early on. We are going second, so we are getting two cards here, which might help us. Uh, nope. Nothing to play. And the Rhino on turn two wouldn't be really good. That is only pushing one point. Yeah, circle is better. Let's go for that. We'll drop one fairy. Are killing that. Oh, nice of you. Now we might just go for the fairy and the rhino here, dealing two damage. Then we might play the ancient elf next turn. We're only doing two damage with the rhino. The amulet is not doing anything right now besides laying on the board. But he has the Earth Sigil, so he might play something that is getting boosted with the Sigil. 3-4. Okay, let's hit him for 2. Play the Ancient Elf. Getting the minions back into the hand. The Ancient Elf will be a 4-5. And we can play another Fairy. Might even take that out. Uh, yeah, why not? You're done for. The journey continues. Into the unknown. What's happening? Next turn, we will play the Fortune Hunter. That one is getting evolved as well. We're getting a Goblin Mage on the in hand. That is costing zero. So we're getting another Rhino. Would be the third what one. Which bolt? And another red hot ritual, killing our small fairy. In that case, in that case, I will play the rhino, hit the face. We'll play the nature's guidance, get the rhino back, get a goblin mage. All right, and another rhino. That one has now three attack. We'll hit him for another three. He's down to twelve. This 
Now then. Oh, will you take that out? You will. Evolving the Merlin to 4-3. And a Conjure Golem. That one is summoning a go Clay Golem. That's a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, got the third Fortune Hunter Fina on the hand. Hmm, okay. Let's play that. Taking out the Merlin. Get a Goblin Mage, so let's play that here. Get the last Reno. Last Rhino. And then we can use the Nature's Guidance next turn along with the Double Rhino. That should be a lot of fun in the face. First curse. Oh, so we're seeing a trait here maybe. Ooh, so we can't hit the face. That's a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, He's going for the face with the clay golem. Hmm. So we can evolve to 4-4 four, four and the snipe, then we could kill the 5-5. Five, five. Now we have the double rhino. Would still be enough. Well, that is one card to go. Taking out the ward. Drop the rhino. Push two damage. We will push three damage. Yeah, and then the nature's guidance gives us the rhinos back. Drawing another card. Water fairy. So down to seven. Getting another Goblin Mage, which is really not helpful because we have all the Rhinos. So we have eight next turn, which means we can play the Goblin Mage, the Water Fairy and the Double Rhino and then win the game. There's no ward here. I'm shocked. Don't hurt me. Can even play a Goblin. That's better. That's three and that's four attack. Four face. Last game for today will be against Bloodcraft. And look at that start. That's not great. We're dropping all three cards. And yeah, that is good. We're going second. So hopefully he's dropping the unit here. And we can play the Elf Child. Not the case. So then we are going for the Circle or the Water Fairy. That one's better. Water Fairy could allow us to trade here, even if he's dropping three life minion. Like that, the Urios. Uh, that one is better, so we're not taking damage. If we drop the Elf Shard Maze here, we will take two damage from the Urios. The Justice allows us to just trade here without getting one point of damage. We now have two fairies in hand. We can create another two with the circle. The Elf Shields are only one point, so the Rhino could get pretty big. Banya Vampire Princess, that one is dealing one damage whenever Forest Bat is coming into play. So we're gonna take that out, hopefully. And we are going for another Water Fairy. Right now we can get a three point Rhino next turn. Razor Reclaw in the face. And that's it, that's not a strong move. Uh, in which case we will go for the circle, get more fairies in the hand. We will play one fairy and we play the Rhino. Yeah, that's a lot for the face. Well, he is already down to 12, while we at 17. With the Fortune Hunter Fina, 
we can evolve that next turn. Then get the Goblin Mage and another Rhino. That's also a Goblin Mage. And Urios. That one is getting evolved. So five defense now. Doesn't really matter because we're still playing the Fortune Hunter, but we're getting now one point of damage from that. Go down to 16, we will take out Urios. We are also getting rid of the Goblin Mage so that we can, our, can play our own Goblin Mage. And get the second Rhino in hand, another 2 in the face here from the Elf Child. So he's down to 10. Can play a lot of cards if he's clearing the board here. He has some sort of AoE in hand, that would be great, in fact. Otherwise we will win anyway, if he's not able to clear the board. Empiric Fortress. So he needs to play some sort of forest bat. They're coming too. Currently we have 7 damage on the board. We can evolve and we have the Rhino, so that is good enough. And we win the third game as well. Three in a row.